All right guys, on today's video, we're gonna be going over some of the offshore tricks that I've learned that I just wanna share with you uh, while I've been out here fishing during the winter down in Texas. Stay tuned, it's coming up. Alrighty y'all, Lou here from Beyond the Bounds. This is a channel geared towards bass fishing gear reviews, tournament footage, you name it. If it's bass fishing, I do it here on this channel. So if you like that sort of thing, click that subscribe button down below. Let's get into today's video, which is gonna be an on the water demonstration of offshore fishing during the winter. Now, if you haven't seen my top winter baits for offshore fishing, go check that out. I'll leave a link right here in the card section but let's get into it. Gonna come out here, gonna map a point. Um, I discovered this point yesterday, so, and, and I caught a really nice fish on it, but it was one of those things that I wanted to show you kind of the process that I went through to do this. And, you know, we're gonna drop down on that point that I discovered yesterday and go through kind of how to fish these things. Um, so, you know, I'll do some cranking on that. I'll also do some uh, Carolina rigging as well but let's get into it. Oh yeah, got him. Oh man, honey, that's a good one. Is that a good one? Can you get the net? Uh-huh. get the net, please? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Please get the net. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh honey, 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 honey. Woo! Daddy! Yeah, baby! Woo Side scan right Dang, there. Look at that. Yes. Woo. 15 feet, guys. Woo. Thank you for getting that net, honey. Oh you my know. God, he hit that like a tank. Oh, a small school of fish on my side scan out there. And I said, you know what? Let me turn around, see what I can get. Woo. We're going to have to put that one on the scale, put them on the weight. And guys, this is how I like to fish, right? Um, I like to come to brand new bodies of water and discover stuff on my own. I think in my path to becoming that better angler that I'm trying to be, that I know that you wanna be as well, it's all about discovering your own stuff. This body of water is Lake Bob Sandlin. I've never received a single piece of information about this lake from anyone other than my mom going, hey, so I see people fishing over there all the time. And I'm all like, what time of year was that? <laughs> Are they fishing for crappie? What were they, you know, what was their boat set up? Uh, you know, what season was it, etc. The ability to come out and discover things on your own, to utilize your electronics and not just go to a point or somewhere that someone has given you, that grows you as an angler. And that's what I'm about. That's what this channel is about. And that's what we're doing today out here on the water. I'm gonna show you a spot that I discovered. Solely my spot, uh, but it's pretty cool because it gave me that one piece of information about what these fish might be doing this time of year and on this body of water because I've eliminated a lot of other things and I finally found something that I think is working pretty darn well. It's already produced one good caliber of fish. Let's see if we can get another one today. All right guys, as I said, I'm gonna start off cranking. Good old 6D in uh, one of my favorite kind of colors, which is a a red with a chartreuse bottom i call it the mustardo crawl um, but my cranking setups are pretty pretty cool i love these cranking setups they're both lose of course david fritz rod um, i think this is rod is great for uh, kayakers or people who like to sit down it's got a short handle that accommodates that plus it's got this palmer handle which is a lot different than a lot of reels because it allows you to get there and have that behind you and it's got great action for setting hooks but tournament mbs will cast forever and if you can find these on ebay snatch them up or you can find them sportsman's outfitters wherever snatch them up they're a fantastic reel like if you're looking for that like oh what's the couple years old model of reel to get right there tournament mb that's why i'm rolling two of them upgraded the uh handles there to the large knobs i know certain people don't like them i love them but got two things on here strike king got a livingston probably throw a 10 xd on here as well uh, both of these rods can handle 10 xds so this is the uh, magnum 2 
crankbait rod. I've also got the Magnum 3 in this series. Let's get after it though. Because <clears throat> the one thing that's been doing the damage for me has been this combo right here. This is the TP1 Black, which is fantastic. Uh, paired with a hyper mag. So let's get over here and see if we can't catch us uh, catch us up a good fish. <laughs> Donkey number two for the trip. Came back to the uh oh popped out in the net too guys. I put my net out and we haven't been doing that at all. And uh sure enough, alright, that was I'm trying to remember my shot right there, but uh woo! We're getting on them Texas bass, baby! Yeah! <laughs> The old uh, Zoom Magnum Trick Worm again. I'm gonna drop this guy in the bucket just to, real quick, get some more pictures. Cold bass, cold bass. It didn't hit it, it just kinda, kinda sucked it in. <laughs> yeah! He's using a really long leader too. Always, always gotta reinspect everything. That is a 30 pound Strike King line. I don't think it's out yet, but 30 pound leader on this thing. Um, I'd have to say mainly because that's what I have. I uh, didn't get any 20 pound in, so bent that hook out. That was actually coming through a tree, kind of suspended a little bit. So they may be up a little bit. So maybe this crankbait will get them again too. Woo! Retie. <clears throat> Using a borot. That was not my standard owner hook on there. That was a different brand. What it is is I located a shell bed, and I'm going to go on my electronics, show you kind of how to configure hummingbird systems uh, because I'm learning hummingbird systems. Uh, I switched over to hummingbird, no sponsorship or anything. I just wanted, uh, I wanted the Lake Master chipping, chipping, <laughs> and you know, I wanted the 360. I fish a lot of structure and cover, cover being, you know, wood and, and things like that. Uh, but I fish a lot of that stuff and that's what I try to key in on the most. And I liked what these hummingbirds had to offer. One of my favorite colors of the Magnum Zoom trick worm black catch so many on black just using a four out hook you can use five out if you want but uh, Four out does pretty good too. Four out does really well for a lot of things like Senkos. No, it's the Wrong one talking to the camera and almost put on the wrong worm. It's offshore stuff though guys Woo It's so much fun when you uh, When you start doing it, I slowly worked myself into this stopped out in about 30 four feet out there and then came in shallower um, been kind of just slowly methodically working my way to my point all right guys so I'm gonna show you kind of how I discovered this spot now initially I discovered this spot utilizing my side scan I was coming out of this area after fishing it pretty extensively pretty hard and further up closer to shore and you know I was targeting wood that I could see but I said you know what, let's go ahead and move spots and then as I was pulling out I looked on my side scan saw a small wolf pack of fish I'll show you that image right now and I was like holy crap I bet I could probably catch those um, so spun around aim my boat at this spot and started catching or caught one fish at least uh, a good fish almost seven pound fish but that's how I discovered this spot now the next part of that process was why are there fish here 
So let's start looking at some of the electronics to show you kind of why these fish were here. All right, first I'm gonna show you on the map why I kind of was focused on this area right there, just capture a screenshot. You'll be able to see that it's a, a transition line, a break line that's out there on the water. <clears throat> and I'm just using the, the Humminbird base maps right now. So I didn't feel like buying the, the full Lake Master one for Texas because I don't fish in Texas all that often. You can see that I've been around that area quite a bit. Uh, just one fishing and then two mapping. But let me show you some of the ways that you can discover these areas. All right guys, so here's kind of a look at it in, in one view. Now, what I've done is kind of tricked out my graphs here and I'll show you, I'm utilizing the palette number eight right here because what that ends up showing is, is hard surface. Now, you have to configure your sonar and contrast settings. These are what I have mine on. I have my contrast on nine and my sensitivity on 13. And you can play with that to get what you want, but look at right there. You see that transition between a soft and hard bottom on the down scan right there? That's a good indication right there. So you can see to where the soft bottom starts in this harder shell bottom starts now that shell is extremely important especially during the winter time summertime etc because you have mussels and all these uh, bottom bottom feeder filter ecosystems down there that you know feed off of the the zytoplankton and, and stuff like that i think that's the word zytoplankton any anyway it's basically what your creature bait looks like is what a zytoplankton looks like and that's where the mussels and clams and etc um live that that filter that and this is where the fish will get up on and you can see that on this other side over here i've got nothing but green so that tells me exactly that i've got a mud bottom on both sides and this is pretty cool because this will work if you're going slow too so that's actually a pretty cool feature and you see that i got mega set up on that one but i've also got my kilohertz on this one set up at 455. Hopefully that sun's not giving you too much of a glare. Let me just take a picture of that real fast. It's pretty cool to, to hold. All you have to do to take a picture is just hold right there. Um, I actually want to take a picture of this transition right there as well. That way if the, uh, the sun's messing with this, I can put that, put that in a uh, screenshot for you there and you see the the bait and everything they're not reflecting red they're not reflecting as a hard surface during any of this but you know you do this and this is something that now that i've discovered here on this lake i'm going to keep trying to replicate this some more because i know it's producing fish i know it's holding fish there's timber near here as well so let's let's see it right here as we come up on you see oh you can also change the palette of this one to I figured this out yesterday. Again, I'm brand new at, at Humminbird, so I'm just, I'm trying to figure these things out too. I like this one, this kind of yellow green, and you'll see more of a return over here in the 2D when that hits as well. But you can see we're not, we're still in muck bottom, kind of, kind of sandy mud, but we're starting to get traces of some red there. And you can see over here as well that we're starting to get some traces of red there as well, as long, in addition to a harder double return in your 2D. You can almost tell your harder parts of this as we come on. Like look at this, how thick this portion is. So you've got a lot more double echo in this area right now as well. And that to me tells me that this area is harder. Now I also know that this area is hard because one of caught fish, fish here we just caught another fish on this same stuff and you can tell and plus i've drugged that carolina rig down there so i know so i've used both a high tech and a low tech way of determining my bottom composition there but it's all about putting together these small pieces of this puzzle 
Uh, let's run over it with just the side scan so you can see that. So if you turn that sensitivity up a little bit, you can start to see, okay, yeah, it's reflecting a lot. And, and side scan a lot of the time too, you know, these this part, what you're looking at here is the boats in this northern part. This is directly, anything in the black is directly under the boat and then things on the other sides are left and right of the boat. And I'm going out to 114 feet. I could change that if I wanted to uh, over here. Just drag this range out a little bit. Ah, too much. I'm go 130. Um, and again, I'm in 15 feet. Water temps 54 degrees. Let's dial that down to 13. I don't like having this too high. You'll get too much, too much of a feedback. But I think. I like it more in the 13 right there. That's that's kind of my sensitivity for this that I've found that I like because you don't want false returns. You don't want false positives to happen here. And you can see that, okay, maybe to my right, there's a little bit more harder of a spot, but anywhere it's blank and green, that's still sand, that's still dirt there. So what it is guys, we utilizing electronics, we've been able to locate another hard surface rock off of a point here, but you know that makes that makes two and once I caught one up shallow, I started focusing more on the, the vein of the rock, the point of the rock that comes out. Just got my second one utilizing a green pumpkin right now. Cause I rigged this one up for my mom and stole it from her. <laughs> Cause she decided to join me today. All right, that's it for that video, guys. Hope you enjoyed uh, kind of this offshore look at things and, and how I go about uh, finding fish offshore, especially on shell beds and hard surfaces. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Y'all have a good one.